Hi everyone! Today I thought it would be really helpful to go through my workflow for how I set up my files for the Dremel laser cutter. I work primarily in Illustrator. I usually draw out my designs first by hand in a notebook and then I take a picture of it and draw it uh, in Illustrator so I have the vector files. Uh, when I set up my file, I actually have a template that I start with. And you can see here, this is the full size of the laser bed, 12 by 20. And then I have uh, five layers that are set up in this file to start with. The, the top four layers are for my final, uh, uh, my final artwork. I have one for the, the cutting and scoring for vector. And I have uh, separate layers for each level of uh, engraving or rastering that I want. And I have one called entitled work layer. I do all of my work, all of the drawing and everything on my work layer to start with. And you can also see on the file I have three uh, color blocks in there already. Those are the three different um, engraving levels. I usually stick to around three because beyond that you can't really tell the difference uh, for the, the color and whatnot. So I'll draw everything uh, that I want, then I'll color it the depths that I want it to be. And then I will cut and paste the individual pieces onto the final artwork layers. So to give an example, I have my rocket pendant pulled up. Uh, my work layer is turned off because I'm done with the drawing the artwork and everything is in place on the final uh, layers. So I'll go through the layers one up at a time. Uh, the top layer is my cut layer. I don't have any um, any scoring on this one, it's only pure cutting. And that's why I only have one color on here. Um, and that's just the outline and the circle in the middle. Then I have three layers of rastering, so I can have three different depths. Um, you can come in here a little bit and, and see it on uh, this example. So this has been engraved with three different layers. You can see it in some of these places where the engravings are uh, touching each other. So you can see some are darker or deeper than the others. And that's the kind of effect that I wanted. So I have a, the darkest layer are really my outlines and things that I wanted to be uh, very dark. And you can see that's my astronaut outline and my rivets and everything. My medium layer is just solid color blocking and my light layer are little details where I needed just one more color that was a little bit different. So that is the base of my astronaut and the middle of my flame. So when you have that all together, uh, you have a very much more complex looking uh, uh, final product. And the reason I have those on separate layers is because then I export it out as separate layers. So when you go to, uh, I, I'm on a Mac, so I have to do save a copy. Uh, and that's how I do a PDF. So I'll save it as a PDF. In my um, PDF settings, you have to make sure in Illustrator that you do not preserve editing capabilities because then it's just a a mess of the file. There's a lot of vectors that overlap with the engraving. So I actually created a PDF preset for laser cutting that sets it, gets rid of everything and that way I know for sure that this file is good for uh, the laser cutter. So then I just save that and I do that for each of the individual layers, not for all of the layers turned on at once. Okay, so that was a four layer uh, laser cutting file. I'm going to show you one more example, and this is my uh, astronaut pendant that I'm currently working on. Uh, come in a little bit closer to see that. This is my prototype one. I usually do one to two prototyping rounds just to get the laser settings correct for how dark and different colored I want it to be. Um, this one I did the whole spacesuit as my medium rastering, and I didn't like how that turned out. So I'm actually flipping that for this time. So now I only have three layers. I have a, my cut, which is around the outside, and also the, um, the hole at the top for the pendant. I have a dark rastering, which is all of my outlines and details. And then I have a, a light rastering, and that's gonna be the 
uh, the face shield and also the details on the space suit. So not only will this make it um, a little bit different colored, it's also going to make it go a lot faster because it's not doing as much rastering. The more rastering you have in your file, the longer it's going to take the laser cutter to uh, finish the file. So now I can save each of these out as a PDF. And like I said, I prefer using PDF for my files so that um, I have full control over what's being engraved and what's being uh, vectored. And I've had a little bit of issue with saving SVGs out. So I don't use that for my vector files. Okay, so now I'm ready to go to take my PDFs that I've exported out uh, into the Dremel software. So my laser cutter is in a different room where I have uh, better ventilation and I've turned it on and I've already put my material in there and done the Z-depth. So in one of the other videos, you'll see that whole setup process. I always start by putting my uh, darkest engraving in first and then I do all my engraving and then the last thing I put in is my cut line so I can line everything up. When you put your files in, um, it's always good practice to rename the workspace. So. so I'm doing my astronaut pendant. And then I can go, I set, do my settings as I go. So for this, this is my darkest engraving. I use my test swatch that I've cut so I can choose what color and depth that I'd like for uh, the engraving levels. For this, I want it pretty deep because this is pretty much my black line. So I'm gonna go with the 90% uh, depth, 50% speed, and a medium resolution. I like just working with the medium resolution because it, um, it makes it a little bit crisper. And, but the high resolution, it takes a lot longer and it doesn't add that much to it. So now I'm gonna do the same thing with my light engraving. And even though this only has the engraving portion in the PDF, I always select engrave only because that's what it's doing. So for, for that lighter one, I'm gonna do a 60% depth and 100% speed with a medium resolution. And then finally I have my cut file Okay, for that, um, it already automatically comes in with the cut for the type of material I have listed. Um, I forgot to mention that I have my uh, 16th inch birch plywood already selected. That's really important to do before you start putting your files in, otherwise you have to reset the, some of the settings. Uh, so this already is set up to cut birch plywood, so that one is good to go. I still go in and double check the cut to make sure it's lined up properly with my engraving because there's a little bit of a bug with Max. You can't print as PDF, which is the preferred way of getting the PDFs into here so they line up properly. So I just have to make sure that it's um, set up like that. Uh, so that's my file set up. Now this is ready to go to uh, the, the laser cutter. Um, and then the last, I guess the last thing that I'll say is uh, when you do say start, you have the opportunity to choose the order that the files cut. So I always like to do the darkest rastering first to the lightest. And that way, if I have a darker raster area and then a lighter one next to it, if there's overburn from that dark, the light will cut it out. Um, so that way you don't end up with scorch marks on lighter, lighter raster areas. Um, and then at the very end, you want to wait till the end to do your cutting so that if it cuts and it shifts at all, it doesn't mess up your engraving. So that's about it for the file setup. Uh, that template that I had originally uh, is in my GitHub repo where I store all of the files that uh, you might want to borrow or download or riff off of. Um, I also have the file for this uh, engraving test swatch. Uh, on that repo and um, I'll be posting more files there and more videos about how I do this process and uh, cool things that I've made with my Dremel laser cutter. Thanks for watching.